My name is Pilot Lars, and I'm going to be doing a brief rundown on the Milky Tracker program. Since a lot of the ones on YouTube I've found to not be very helpful. I've been using this program for maybe a year, and I by no means consider myself to be an expert in it, but I do think that there are a lot of questions that people who just, just download the program and look at it and feel utterly helpless. And I think there's a lot of questions that I can answer. Um, this is what Milky Tracker looks like the moment you open it. I haven't added any configurations to it, so I will show you how to add one, the most important one. Go to Config, Layout, and set the resolution to something a bit higher. Um, I like 102 by 768. You can use whichever one you prefer, or you can use uh, full screen. Um, I just I like using windowed mode so that I don't have to alt tab when I'm doing things if I want to look at something. So click whichever one you'd like and then click apply and it will ask you to restart the program. So we will do that. And now it's all nice and big and pretty. Uh, Alright, first thing, first most basic thing you're going to need to know is how to create a sample or create an instrument. So we have the first instrument slot up here selected. Um, come over here to the sample editor on the left click that and it'll bring up this black rectangle down here right click anywhere in there and click new uh, I like creating what we're going to do is we're going to create a square wave here and I like 48 I have no real reason as to why I do that um, you can use any number between I think 24 and it goes all the way up to the tens of thousands but what the size and samples is is kind of like the length and time in which that waveform is going to be played so click OK and right click again and go down to generators and click square. Uh, square waves are always louder than other samples for a reason which I don't know. So I'm going to put the volume at 50% and I'll give it three waves like that. That is not how it should look. For some reason the first sample always looks like that when you create it. So click the two on the instruments and then go back to the first one and it should look normal like that. Uh, there are four options down here. We have no loop, forward, ping pong, and one shot. Uh, pretend one shot isn't there. No loop, all that is is a... Uh, actually this is not at 50% so I'm gonna remake this square wave. Now it's at 50%. You can see it's dramatically smaller than it was. Um, but yeah, no loop is going to play this once and be done. It probably will be too short to even hear. Um, you can hit the keys on your keyboard to test out how it's going to sound, so I may or may not be able to hear what I was doing. Uh, and then that, we will go to forward. That's what we're going to use. Forward is going to bring up these tabs on the left here. So I will drag the one all the way to the end. Now, what's going to happen? When it plays that sample, it's going to start at the beginning, go to the end, and then come back to the beginning and keep doing that until you tell it to stop. Like that. Still doesn't sound very appealing. Uh, well, before I go on to the next step, I'll explain ping pong. Ping pong wouldn't matter in this scenario. So what ping pong would do would start at the beginning, go to the end, and then bounce back like a ping pong. Um, it would sound essentially the same here, actually but ping pong can be useful if you have a bit more complex waveform which we certainly don't have here uh, so we'll leave that at, leave it at forward and come up here to the instrument editor where we're going to change the volume around so that it has a nice fade out to it instead of just being that loud alarming sound uh, this graph thing here is our volume simulator uh, click the on button to enable it and you have this line up top here to start off I'm going to click the box on the right and drag it down so that when we play a note it's just going to slowly fade out uh, we have this fake piano layout down here click play on the left to activate it and now you'll see all the notes we got seven octaves here and you can bump it up by doing this or you can bump it up a few notes over there. As you can 
here it sounds a hell of a lot better. Um, so you can hit spacebar to enable and disable record mode, but for the sake of putting something down in the uh, in these channels here, we can put down. We can start some sort of arpeggio effect. Again, I. I don't have a whole lot of music theory knowledge, so if I say a word like arpeggio and I don't in fact know what it means, then just disregard it, since I'm not really trying to show off my music theory knowledge. I'm trying to show off Milky Tracker here. Anyhow, uh, and I failed that. All right, there we have something very basic. Um, up here we have our speed and our beat per minute. Uh, the higher the speed is, the slower it's going to play. So if you put it at 10, obviously it's a lot slower. Normally I don't even mess with the speed. I will change the beat per minute around though. If I wanted it to be a bit faster, I'd put it maybe 150 beat, beats per minute. Like that, or slower, you can take it down to 100 or so. Anyhow. 125 beats per minute at 6 speed is the default, so we will leave it at that. If you want to, if you ha make something like that and you like it, you can select it all, copy it, and just paste it again. And just keep doing that, and, or if you wanted to make it on a new, a new chord or whatever, you could do that. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm not going to bother. We can go on to making a, a bass now to go along with that. So again, new instrument, our square wave is on 1, we're going to go down to 2, and right click it, new, stick with 48, generators, and instead of square, we're going to do a triangle wave. Triangle wave is not as obnoxiously loud as the square wave, so we're going to bump it up to 100% again, and keep it at 3 periods, I think, yeah. Again, forward, drag this bar all the way to the end. Down here we have the option called draw, which you can draw your own. Uh, that is something that's there if you ever want to mess around with it. By all means, go ahead. Um, you can get a bit more of a custom sound out of it. But for the sake of this tutorial and keeping everything relatively simple, we're just going to stick with that. Um, a triangle wave like this played it a higher octave is probably going to sound very similar to the square wave, but actually before before we start playing the sound, I'm going to do the same thing with the volume as well, put it down maybe even a bit shorter. Alright, uh, I don't know if you can hear it, it's just playing through the, my microphone. There we have it. Um, I'm not trying to make something that sounds pleasing, I guess, here. Um, I'm just trying to demonstrate putting different sounds together to make uh, the basis of a song. So we have our bass, we have a lead sound. Um, I'd like to show how to make a, a kick drum and a snare drum, but unfortunately I find it really hard to make a kick drum in Milky, Milky Tracker. I've seen other people do it before, but I just, I, I either don't use one at all, or I will take one, like a, a wave sample from a, a, venge a vengeance pack or something like that, since we can upload, uh, or can import wave sounds into Milky Tracker, which is a, a pretty cool ability, um, I guess kind of frowned upon, sort of, but, you know, for the sake, if you're new to the program and you don't exactly know how to make your own, um, it's better to use a wave file that sounds good than a really shitty sounding kick drum that you made, I think, personally. Um, but figuring out how to make things to your own is can be very beneficial in the long run. 